when it comes to really filling but light suppers that are full of flavor and cook really fast. Seafood is your best friend. We are gonna make pan seared sea bass with pomegranates and walnuts. I'm actually gonna do branzino today, but this recipe works really well with black sea bass, trout, whatever sort of light flaky white fish you love um, because the flavors are really punchy and wonderful and that is sort of the beauty of a light and fairly neutral protein is that it takes on the flavor of whatever you put around it. In our case, we are doing a Mediterranean explosion of delight. We are doing pomegranate seeds, wonderful, sweet little juicy pops of flavor that I am taking full advantage of as long as they are in season. Um, Fresno chilies for a bit of color and heat. I'm gonna slice up some shallot and garlic, hit it with a little lemon zest at the end, and then walnuts provide this really kind of like tender, wonderful texture play. Um, also bring a little bit of fat to this dish, which is great because otherwise it's pretty light and, and lean. And you can leave it at just the fish if that's what you're going for and you have other sides planned or just wanna make a nice, easy salad. But I sometimes think that potatoes are the best fish accompaniment. So we are gonna do a lemon and oregano roasted potato. These are Yukon gold potatoes, so they have this really kind of like buttery, melt in your mouth flesh as it is, and we're just gonna doctor them up even more with um, some olive oil, fresh oregano, a little coriander seed. You know how we do. Okay, so take your scrubbed and washed Yukon gold potatoes. You see these really creamy yellow, buttery looking flesh on the inside. And I think these are pretty small, so I'm just gonna do wedges. You could do them in quarters. Um, you could definitely do, like if there's a slightly larger one, you could do a third on each side. So check it out here, one, two, just roughly even size. These should cook, we're gonna go 400 degrees. I'm gonna guess 25 minutes. <laughs> but we'll find out. Test them. You want the flesh inside really creamy and soft. We should get a nice bit of golden brown color developing on the parts of the potato hitting the hot surface of a pan, which reminds me, take your pan, and I'm doing a big one today because surface area is our best friend when it comes to roasting. The more surface area you have, the less chance you'll have of steaming. Steaming is the enemy of texture. It works sometimes for things we need it for, but steaming, texture, they don't go together. Pop your pan into a 400 degree oven. We're just gonna leave it there like five minutes while we finish these potatoes up. Um, and that means the second your delicate potato flesh hits hot surface, it will begin the golden brown process. You can definitely do this on the tray if your tray has not already been put in the oven. Um, but I am just gonna grab a bowl and quickly toss these together with our seasonings. I am making more than a few extra here because they're delicious. <laughs> Olive oil, nice couple glugs of liquid gold on top. Some kosher salt. Let's start with, I would say a good full teaspoon. Um, you can always add a little bit more and taste as you go. Uh, a little garlic salt too, actually. So maybe hold back a little bit on that salt or just go for garlic powder. And the reason I'm using garlic salt rather than just mincing up garlic and throwing it on there is because this is going in such a hot heat oven with the hot sheet pan, garlic has a tendency to burn. You could definitely mince up garlic and toss it on maybe like five minutes before the end of the cook. And that way you'll just give it a chance to roast a little bit. It won't be raw tasting, but it won't burn. Um, and I might do that. A little chili flake, leave this off if you or your kids do not like it hot, but I think a little spicy potato just takes the cake. Coriander seed. I've been using this a lot recently. I cannot get enough of the lemony, deliciously fragrant taste of this happy little seed. And it's funny because I've come a long way in my life. I hated cilantro for the longest time. And slowly but surely through like things like um, guacamole, I got to love, not love, but like better cilantro. And coriander seed is the seed of cilantro. And I I'm obsessed with it, so just gotta keep trying and playing and experimenting. Rolling pin. Let's just crunch these up a little bit. And this is just gonna help release their flavor and make them a little bit easier to crunch into. That looks good. We don't need to go too crazy because these are gonna have time to roast in the oven so they will soften up and pop that right on top of our potatoes. Oh, look at that. Delicious. Just give them a good toss. Make sure each wedge 
get some of that garlic salt and some of those chili flakes, some coriander seed. It smells so good already. Once they're good and coated, that should be perfect timing to grab our now hot pan and cascade these potatoes right on top. And what we will hope for is a lovely sizzle. We are definitely not going to waste what is left behind in this bowl. That is max flavor. Let's put that right on top. Mm. And just spread these around. There's lots of room in the pool. Everybody gets their own section. If you are really fastidious about your potatoes, you can go ahead and make sure that every single one has a flat side touching the hot surface of the pan because that's gonna give you, again, maximum color, maximum flavor, maximum shine when it comes to eating potatoes. Straight back to the oven, 400 degrees. Let's call it 25, 30 minutes. Let's see how they're doing. We'll give them a nice shake about halfway through. Mmm, mmm, oh, oh my gosh. I'm happy already. All right, cook away. I also have this gorgeous fresh oregano, which is, fresh herbs are always more delicate than dry ones. Um, so I don't want to put this on the potatoes too early, but like the final five minutes of the cook, I'm thinking this will be a lovely little addition, potentially with that garlic we talked about. Now let's address the fish in the room. Branzino, gorgeously filleted and cleaned with skin on, all ready for us. I took it out of the fridge and I'm letting it just sit with some paper towel until we're ready to use it. That is going to help make sure two things happen to guarantee success. Number one is it comes to room temperature, so you wanna cook protein roughly from room temperature, that way you're not fighting the coolness of your refrigerator when you're trying to achieve gorgeous texture on the surface and perfectly cooked interior. Um, and the drying out of the skin in particular is gonna help get us that gorgeous crispy component that we're craving. While that's drying, let's go ahead and mince up a shallot. This is a big old boy. Um, you can use two medium or one large like I have here. And we're just gonna put a nice mince and that is going to saute in with our fish to create kind of like almost, you know, a quick little sauce in the pan. Two mince. I like to just put, you guys have seen this before, a long ways slice down the shallot and then come across at least twice. I like to, especially on a big one like this, one and two. And then you're gonna just use your fingers in your claw form to kind of hold the whole shallot together and start working your blade across from the top. And that is going to give you lovely, even mints of shallot. And honestly, working on knife skills was single-handedly the biggest improvement to my home cooking game. So take every opportunity that you can to practice. I'm going to include some heat now. This is a Fresno chili. If you don't like it spicy, you can leave this out. You can use a bell pepper instead, just mince that up and throw it in for a bit of color. I like to put this into rounds. And the reason for that is because it just holds its shape so beautifully and brings that nice big pop of color and looks pretty and flavorful at the end, which is always my goal. <laughs> you kind of want to just like take your moment here and really hit it all the way through the board and kind of like saw because you want the rings to come apart beautifully and hold their own shape and not be attached to one another. I'm going to go for two because I'm living on the edge like that. So see, sometimes they stay attached to me that I have to kind of like fight to get it apart. So just complete the sawing motion. Okay, this is gonna be very spicy. When you have like equal parts shallot to Fresno, it's serious. You do not need to do that. <laughs> and I'm gonna add some garlic. I'm just gonna mince this up. Not too tiny, because I don't want it to burn in the hot pan. I'm gonna use a cast iron skillet for this experience. So just a rough chop of, these are tiny little cloves, so let's do a five. Just pop those out of their skin and then we will rough chop them. And we are getting everything ready to go before we start cooking the fish to egg, give the potatoes time um, to roast away. And also because this fish is gonna cook up super fast and you don't wanna risk it burning if you're still working on getting all your little flavoring elements together. And we're just gonna rough chop these guys. Because no one wants like a huge clump of garlic in their bite, but present.
Okay, good. We are ready to go. Let's check on our potatoes, see if we can flip them around a little bit, and then we'll get to go on our fish. Mmm, oh yeah, check that out. I did crank the heat up to about 425, just because these are nice sizable little chunks. So just give these a nice toss, move them around. I might even crank this to 450 because they're big, but they're not that big, and I do not want the inside to be mushy before the outside is lovely and caramelized. Okay, oven is going to 450. We're powering it up. <laughs> Don't walk away from your situation now. One thing I'm gonna do really fast is just toast some walnuts, and that's just gonna give us a nice little toasty flavor um, and develop a little color on here. I don't chop them up first. I just use halves and pieces, whatever I have lying around. Makes them less likely to burn. They're gonna go into this 450 degree oven with the potatoes, which is a wildly dangerous thing to do because nuts burn so fast. So remind me in like two minutes to take them out. Um, maybe three. Meanwhile, let's score our fish. Scoring just helps the skin to crisp. It helps release some of that moisture. It helps prevent curling. So we want a gorgeous, just a couple hashes, not too deep. You're not puncturing all the way through to the surface of the filet. And let's do the other side. If you have a sharp paring knife, that is what you should use. Perfect. We're gonna get going on the fish. Add a little avocado oil or some other neutral oil to the pan. You can definitely use olive oil. Um, the avocado oil is just really like a blank canvas. Make sure that that is running and shimmering over the entire surface of your pan. Okay, I'm gonna let that come up to heat. I want the, I want the cast iron itself really hot before I lay the fish in. And I'm gonna show you a technique to help make sure that your fish does not stick to the base of your pan. If you've cooked seafood before and you've had it really just like go sideways on you, um, you probably have not given the skin time to lift off. It should create a crust almost that's very slippery and slides right off the base of your pan. Um, so that's what we will do today. Oil's getting nice and shimmery. Nuts do not smell burnt yet. We are currently still in business. Oh, let's season the fish. I'm just gonna go on these padded lovely fillets with a little bit of ground coriander, again, to kind of echo the wonderful flavor of the cracked coriander on our potatoes. Plus, we want a little bit of kosher salt. Not too much here because we're gonna have lots of flavor coming through in the sauce itself that we're gonna make. So just a little bit to season both sides of our fish. Let's check this pan. Oh yeah, it's looking good. Oil's getting nice and shimmery. Do a little test. Get some water on your fingertips and see if it sparkles. It does. <laughs> All right, skin side down of your scored lovely Branzino. Always lay away from yourself so you don't, oh, watch this, watch, look at that. See how it sizzles, see it pops right up like that? That's okay. Come in here and just sort of press it down. And here's where I'm helping to make sure it doesn't stick and spreading it out back flat again. Wiggle it into that hot oil. Grab your second fillet so they cook evenly. Into the pan. Ooh, watch that go, watch it go. <laughs> and it's gonna seize up and then it will actually relax. And wiggling it like this helps that process. <laughs> and once it's clearly not sticking to the base of the pan any longer, you can let it hang out and relax and do its thing. I'm gonna go to a medium low. Medium, I guess is fine, medium. Check on our walnuts, because those are what will kill us if we don't pay attention to them. Getting there, but not quite. Mmm. Branzino is a lovely, very mild, Really light fish, it cooks super fast. So we're probably gonna go three minutes on this first side, maybe a minute or two on the other. What we're looking for is for the flesh to be totally opaque, but not dry. You want a really lovely and moist fish, especially something fresh and beautiful like this. It should smell like the sea when you take it home. And then 
when you're going to eat into it. It should taste light and fresh and not dry. Um, this is going beautifully. I think we can take the walnuts out now. Potatoes are looking much better now. Um, give your walnuts a chance to cool and then we're just gonna roughly chop those guys up. Oh, the hot walnuts are hitting up against the garlic that we chopped here before. It's very nice. And remember, these are just sort of like fatty little pops of flavor that will get sprinkled over our fish. And if you wanted to make maybe a quinoa or couscous side dish to go with this, you could actually cook all of this and toss it in with the couscous or the quinoa and make like a beautiful sort of starchy side to go underneath your gorgeously pan seared fish. That would be lovely. I don't want to fight with my fish. So if I'm sticking even a little bit, I'm going to leave it alone. But these you can see have flattened out beautifully again. Oh, see the skin is still attaching to the bottom. Let's check on our potatoes. Look at that lovely golden brown creation. Keep it going. All right, let's flip this fish. I did add a tiny little touch of butter, like a teaspoon of butter just to help with the golden brown process. And one thing I do want to say also, Branzino is such a light, mild fish. It cooks really fast. The scoring technique with the skin is helpful, but not essential for a piece of fish this like light and, and just thin. Um, it really is a very helpful thing to do with thicker cuts of fish like salmon or bigger sea bass. Um, but if you want to skip it, you can. All right, let's check out the golden brown skin, shall we? Oh yeah, this is looking gorgeous. Our potato should be almost done. The fish is beautiful and cooked. Let's take that out and set it to the side while we make our pan sauce. All right, oh, yum. Look at that golden brown skin, so beautiful. And these lovely little fried pieces of skin. I am gonna go ahead, I have no shame. I'm gonna put them right on top so people bite those first because they are salty and scented with that coriander. And just gonna give a lovely little texture play here. Into our hot avocado oil butter combo, I am going to add our shallots first, followed by Fresno chilies, followed by garlic. Mmm, mm, smell in here is phenomenal. And if for some reason you smelled um, burning or thought that the oil was getting a little too dark or charred, you could definitely empty out the oil and start fresh with the pan. But I figure let's use all the flavor we are building. I'm just gonna let the shallot saute like a minute and then I'm gonna add the Fresno. Fresno and garlic going in next. I'm gonna go at the same time because this is cooking pretty fast along with our walnuts, which are going in last because they're already lovely and roasted and they're just going in to soak up a bit of flavor. I have a fresh lemon that I'm going to use to deglaze the pan and scrape up all that flavor hiding at the bottom. Just catching any seeds in my hand. Turn that heat back up to medium high. Let that just soak up so much good flavor. Hit it with a little salt just a touch because we're going to finish with some flaky salt too, but just to bring out some of the sweetness of that shallot and the garlic. Oh, yum. Okay. Final second on here. I'm going back up to high. I'm adding in our walnuts and we are ready to go. Oh, you know what I forgot? The fresh oregano. Quick, <laughs> strip yourselves some lovely leaves of fresh oregano. <laughs> Throw them onto your potatoes. <laughs> Literally, totally skipped my thoughts. As did the fresh garlic that we talked about. So, you know, use your imagination. We can pretend. <laughs> Maybe a little more of you. I love the smell of this fresh oregano popping in the hot oil. I'm just flavoring up that last cook of the potatoes. One final shake. Oh, look at that color. Okay. Final two minutes in there. These guys are ready. 
We can top our fish. Never put anything on the plate before you've tasted it. Let's try this walnut Fresno shallot garlic lemon combo. Honestly, that is the meal. This is so phenomenally delicious. It's spicy, but the walnuts help cut some of that heat. The tanginess of the lemon, the sweetness of the garlic and shallot underneath. No joke, I would eat this with cheese on a sandwich. Done. Mmm. Mmm. To serve, let's cascade some of this beautiful, rich, and nutty, and flavorful topping over our fish. We, of course, cannot forget. Just throw a few of those fries right on top. We cannot forget about the pomegranate seeds. Sweet, juicy, cooling, the perfect layer just to cut some of the heat and crispness of our fish. And finally, let's grab our potato from its inferno and woo, guys, it was worth the wait. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Delicious. Honestly, if you're vegetarian and want to just do the potatoes with the walnut topping, it's a good move. Go ahead and scrape up some of your beautifully charred and golden brown. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Are you serious right now? Make sure you grab some of the beautifully crisped oregano pieces because those, those are where it's at. Scatter those on top. Get yourself the last lemon and get yourself a microplane and hit this plate with a little bit of fresh lemon zest. and a little pinch of flaky salt. And serve this up with the most incredible tart and tangy salad, and you have a feast beyond compare. Check it out. Gorgeous crispy skin. Gorgeous crispy potato. Gorgeous cascade of hot and rich and tender and delicious topping. Lovely lean protein, let's taste. Where do I begin? Right here. First of all, let's check out this gorgeous fish and this golden brown skin. Mm. 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 My three-year-old does this now when she eats things that she likes or she's like emphatically telling you about her social calendar. I have to, I have to. I love it. <laughs> so I love it. Did you hear the crunch of the skin? It was beyond, okay. Now let's try some of the fish with our sparkling blend of pomegranates, fresnos, garlic, shallots, whatever else we put in there that's so good. Every once in a while, I come up with a topping that to me could make cardboard taste perfect. It used to be scallions, dates, and hazelnuts that I fry in a little bit of olive oil and then put over, I was using it over roasted okra, but like literally anything, it's such a good topping. But it might be unseated, dethroned by the combination of shallots, garlic, fresno chilies, and walnuts with a little squeeze of lemon juice. It's ridiculous. Okay, now potatoes. Golden brown, crisp exterior. And then let's cut into it. Be lying, creamy, soft, gorgeous interior. Topped with a crispy little fleck of oregano. <laughs> I'm really lavishing the moment here today. Mm. 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 Mm -mm -mm. Oh, lemony, that little pop of cracked coriander popping through. Ooh, a little garlic salt. So luscious. Yukon gold potatoes, guys. Next level. Let's put it all together. One final bite. I 
can't even talk. But if I were talking, I would tell you, wow, just phenomenal. The entire bite, just so many little tendrils marrying so beautifully. Love this dish. Highly recommend you make it immediately. Um, make it for a crowd, make it for yourself. It feels very gourmet. This is like, you know, weeknight, but make it fancy. Why not? Go for it. <laughs>